And Fox That's Business. right. Tune in. In the meantime, implementing this health care law is getting much harder to figure out. So blame the states for opting out? Look at this. It puts more of a burden on us. And it's ironic, since all these folks say that uh, they believe in empowering states, that they're going to end up having the federal government do something that uh, we'd actually prefer states to do if they were properly cooperating. Well, apparently the state of Georgia is not one of those states cooperating to that state's Republican Governor Nathan Deal. Uh, Governor, I think he was singling you out. What did you feel about that? <laughs> well, I'm not by myself. Uh, over half of the states are in the same posture that Georgia's in, and that includes seven Democrat governor states, including the president's home state. They are not doing it either. So what is that telling you? Now, he's saying it's slowing the rollout of this health care you're, and, and you're, some of your colleagues who are doing this are saying it's slowing the rollout of a nightmare. Explain. Well, we've uh, said for a very long time that this was a, a train wreck about to happen. And uh, even the Democrat senator who sponsored the legislation has admitted that that's probably what the future holds. Uh, what we see at the exchanges is this. I started an exploratory operation back in the summer of 2011, uh, thinking that this was going to be an opportunity for our state to have flexibility to design an exchange the way we thought it was appropriate. It became very obvious very quickly that it was going to be a state exchange in name only and that it was going to be dictated to us as to what we could and could not do by the federal government. So at that point, I said, well, if they want to do it, then just let them do it because I'm not going to just put our name on something that we can't afford. But, you know, there are other states that are sort of, you know, throwing up their hands, Governor, and saying, all right, we're, we're going to get all, all our public workers at least onto these exchanges. Uh, other private companies that are saying we can't afford these part-time workers, so out they go. And I'm wondering if there is a grander strategy that I'm missing, not a Machiavellian one, maybe just part of a plan to get to it, a single-payer system, where, where that was the goal all along, and this is just all the pieces leading to it. Well, I'm one of those that has shared that uh, concern. Uh, certainly one way to get to a one-payer uh, system would be to set up a system that fails miserably. And I'm a, I am afraid that what has been put in place by the Affordable Care Act is going to do exactly that. And then the approach will be, well, we told you all along that the only way this could be done is for the federal government to have total control and to run the entire system. Uh, that is not a very appropriate way, in my opinion, to achieve the kind of changes that the president says he wants. I think what the president also said, reading between the lines, Governor, is that if not for guys like you fighting him every which way on this thing, uh, we'd be a lot further along saving money with this thing. What do you say to that? Well, I don't see it that way at all. Uh, the data hub that is essential to making this entire thing work is not in place, and it does not appear it will be in place within the time frame that is called for. But I think in a bigger sense, Neil, what we are seeing is that it's going to have a serious impact on the cost of insurance. In the state of Georgia, our state health insurance benefit plan for our state employees has already increased by 14% because of the provisions of the Affordable Care Act. And that's before the big ones kick in next year. It's been estimated that we will see our premiums jump to about 27% above what they are now oh, because of this legislation. Governor, thank you.